So welcome to this week's Optimal Health Clinic Facebook Live. And this week I wanted to do something to follow on a little bit from the video I did a couple of weeks ago where I talked about the importance of being in your body to facilitate the healing process. And something that, that kind, of, um, kind of came to my mind as a kind of continuation from that was the importance of having, and one of the things that that allows is the importance of having deep healing rest. And in a sense, the, the key kind of piece I wanted to use to kind of use to reflect on this is the capacity to give ourselves permission to fully allow our body to rest and to be in a deep sense of being in a healing state. And in a sense, part of the, the kind of irony of what a lot of people with ME chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia experience is the suffering from a severe chronic illness of which the primary symptom is fatigue. And yet so often there is a resistance to actually allowing ourselves to fully rest and switch off. It's like primary symptom fatigue. And yet there's, there's either on a conscious level or more often on an unconscious level, a resistance and fighting against actually letting the body surrender and let go. And that deep rest is crucial. And it's one of the things that's actually, in a sense, crucial at every stage of recovery. It's obviously crucial in the tired and wired stage. In fact, the more deep rest we get at tired and wired stage is the most important ingredient for moving to stage one to stage two. At stage two, it's what helps us heal and calm the wiredness of the tired and wired stage at stage two. And at stage three, as we're really starting to bounce the boundaries and challenge what we're doing, it's what helps us rebound from the times that we push the boundaries a little bit too hard and fast. And in a sense, it's in deep rest when our nervous system is fully switched off, we're in a parasympathetic state in our nervous system. When our mind is quiet and our body is fully surrendering and letting go, that's the place which the most powerful healing happens. And something that I've said many times before is the body has a remarkable capacity towards healing. And I've used the analogy, it's like you pull a bath, uh, pull a bath, pull a bar of soap underneath the, um, the surface in the bath and you let go and it naturally floats back to the surface. And so the same is true with our healing body. Now, of course, it isn't always that simple. Often there are many other factors that are happening that need to be supported and understood. But our body does have some natural capacity towards healing. And we often see that if we have a mini crash or relapse and we do the right things, we at least often bounce back to the level we were at before. And if we can really sustain the whole recovery process, of course, we move, um, we move beyond that as well. So the question is, what stops us from having deep rest? What gets in the way of our nervous system really being able to switch off and our body and us fully surrender and our body fully come into a place of healing. And one of the most obvious things and key things, of course, is maladaptive stress response. It's our nervous system being overstimulated. And that's a whole thing. And you know, I've talked about that on videos, and I'm sure we'll do some more videos specifically focused on that. Another piece is the, um, the helper achiever patterns. Um, and again, we'll, we've done a video on the achiever pattern. Um, I think we don't, we'll do one on the helper or the other way around, but we'll certainly explore those more in the future um, as well. But specifically, the thing that I thought would be useful to comment on a little bit more today is the place in us that somehow is often a factor in what may have caused us to get sick in the first place, which is our tendency to think that we have to push things and drive things to make them happen. But it's the part of us that somehow won't leave ourselves alone. It's like even when we're resting, we're trying to do better at resting. When we're trying to get in a healing state, we're trying to do a healing state rather than be in a healing state. When we're doing meditation practice, we're trying to get it right as opposed to just actually allowing ourselves to be where we are. When we're starting to um, do some kind of bouncing the boundaries, increasing our activity levels, we're trying to get it right. Like there's a kind of a subtle rigidity and subtle kind of over-efforting in what we're doing, which creates a tension and a subtle sense of um, 
of resistance and stimulation inside of our system. And what that means is when it comes time to rest, it's like there's something in us that's still holding on. There's something in us which is still trying to get it right or worrying about if I fully surrender this, I won't come out of it and I've got these things to do and I can only rest for this amount of time and yesterday I rested for less time and now I'm needing more time. Does that mean that I'm going to need even more rest tomorrow and I've got to fight this, not give in to it? Like there's all these different kind of levels within which somehow there's a resistance against and fighting what our body actually needs. And another piece that's linked to this is the difference between doing things because we feel we should be doing them versus doing things because they bring us joy. And one of the dangers of being on the recovery path is we spend so much time doing things we think we should be doing that we make very little time for the things that actually bring us pleasure and actually things that we actually genuinely enjoy doing. And so it's almost like we, um, as we start to get energy back, that energy specifically is going into all the things we haven't been doing, we think we should be doing, as opposed to things we haven't done for years that bring us some joy and pleasure. And sometimes that, you know, we might be restricted to how much we can do that. You know, maybe something we used to love to do was to, was to dance or to, um, you know, go and play um, golf or whatever it may be. And maybe we can't go to a dance class and we can't go and play a round of golf, but we could put some music on at home and dance for five minutes or we could go to a, a golf range and hit, you know, 20 balls or something. So it's like letting ourselves start to have the taste of the things that we love that bring us pleasure. And especially at, at, at late stage two and into stage three, it's not what you do, it's the way you do what you do. Or it's the state you're in when you're doing what you do. And sometimes we can do something that's physically more, requires more energy, but it brings us so much joy in the process of doing it that it actually gives us energy. And other times we do something which should be relatively straightforward and it just drains the hell out of us because we're just not happy doing it. And as I say, this, 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 the, the capacity to do things that give us energy is stage dependent in terms of, of where you are on, on the stage of recovery. Um, but the point of finding things that bring you joy and allowing your body to not just rest because you're lying. Something you, I've known her patients that initially when they first started working with us were when they were lying on the bed supposedly resting, their nervous system was more stressed and stimulated than someone on a trading floor in London in the middle of a stock market crash. It's like the kind of the, the amount of resistance and fighting and anxiety and and, and um, achiever patterns and everything else so depleting that just because they're physically resting they're not actually fully resting and so as a kind of takeaway from this video in terms of kind of practically how to work with this I want to encourage you to look at your relationship to resting do you have uh, judgments about resting thinking that you shouldn't be doing it or do you have um, expectation of resting or pressure on yourself with resting when you're resting, are you able to leave yourself alone? Or are there patterns running that you should be doing something else, you shouldn't be feeling this way? And just see if you can cultivate a bit more space and a bit more openness and a bit more surrender in your relationship to letting your body have deep rest. Because when you're suffering from severe chronic illness, of which the primary symptom for many people is fatigue, deep rest is crucial. Of course, the more we try to get deep rest and we fight to get deep rest, that can become more of the problem. And that's where, again, I'm saying that we want to see if we can find the way to accept and allow where we are and surrender to rest rather than fight the process of rest. Uh, Vanessa just saying, I had to sleep all day, tried staying up, my body wanted me to sleep, so I slept all day at evening. That's a good example of surrendering. And if we're in a crash or a relapse, this is all, it's the stage we're at, um, it's crucial to let the body have that deep rest. I've never met someone who sustainably recovered from this group of illnesses by just fighting their body. I've met many, many people who have recovered by listening to their body and surrendering, surrendering to their body. Um, so that's been useful. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter. Um, next week, um, I'm on holiday, so I may or may not be able to do a video depending upon internet and timing and family and that kind of thing. Um, Ruth saying, when I do a relaxation, I experience sensations like someone walking on my grave. Does this mean I'm in a deep relaxation state? 
Um, it depends. It depends if that's a, um, a kind of a response to your body where there's some kind of trauma and it feels uncomfortable that needs to be worked with. Um, or it may be, maybe you're going so deep into relaxation that actually it's a good thing. So I would need a bit more detail to have a sense of that. Um, and Colette's saying, I'm just starting to surrender to deep rest without feeling guilty. That's fantastic. In fact, that's a good point, Colette. The other piece here is the inner critic and all the stories and all the judgments of the inner critic that telling you you should be resting, shouldn't be resting, you're not resting right, why aren't you resting more, why aren't you resting less, all of that noise is definitely a big part of this as well, and that's definitely something to work with. And I'm sure we'll do a Facebook Live um, on the inner critic at some point as well. So thanks for watching. I hope that's been useful. Bye-bye.